Hello YouTubers, this is Jack Jet with you this morning and we're going to be going over some of the features of the Mustang and we're going to start off here in the Williamsburg Jamestown Airport Kilo Juliet Golf Golf and we're slightly northeast of the field and we're going to zoom in and reveal the very nice RW Designs Mustang Citation. The visuals of the aircraft have been again updated in 1.02. You can now see the uh, lightning dissipation stripes on the uh, radome in the nose cone and some other little pretty things that have showed up. And we'll step inside. And what we're going to look at in this particular video is some of the things that are uh, as the aircraft has spawned. Now, generally speaking, this aircraft, cold and dark, you're going to find the following switches in the following positions. You're going to find the generators and the battery switch in the off position. You're going to find the avionics spawns or should be left with the avionics master off. Also, the battery test uh, and standby instruments is off. Ignitions are off. Fuel boost pumps are in normal. Fuel transfer is in off. Oxygen mask is set to headset as opposed to oxygen mask. The uh, ice protection switches are all off and the pitot static should be off. And that system, the pitot and static system, is designed to make sure that the uh, uh, aircraft has useful data in all regimes of flight. But it is limited to two minutes of being turned on. So that's a runway lineup item. It should not be turned on until you're pulling on the runway ready for takeoff along with your ignitions uh, and uh, all of your lights, passenger safety. Gear handle is down. Gear silence horn is down and off. Anti-skid should be off. Although a lot of pilots do leave it on, it uh, can be and should be probably in the off position. Your uh, passenger safety light switch is off, and all of your lighting is off. Your panel backlighting is also off. That's not a problem. Now, on the right-hand side, the co-pilot side, you have your air conditioner switch, and that should be off, and that should be off until the right engine is started the cockpit temperatures and the bleed air source that should once you uh, get ready for startup that should be in both the oxygen mask for the co-pilot should be on headset your cabin dump which is a guarded switch um, as I've just opened it up you could then push and dump the va uh, excuse me dump the uh, pressurization of the aircraft now uh, as far as that goes, I had an in-flight emergency at one time where I had smoke in the cockpit and I needed to uh, to turn that off. And uh, what I actually did was turn off the source selectors and it let the cabin bleed down slowly over a period of seconds instead of instantaneously. And from 39,000 feet, I can tell you the bang that ac accompanies that and the white cloud that forms in the cabin, you don't want to see that and you would like to maintain your hearing. So by turning it off, you shut off the inflow and the outflow valve stays closed, but the, just leaks down normally by the door seals and other places in the cabin. And that's a much more pleasant experience than the dump valve. All right, there's your Hobbs meter, which is more people are scared of a runaway Hobbs meter than they are um, basically bad weather because they have to pay for each Hobbs hour. Here's your uh, oxygen supply, which when you pull it out, you notice that the gauge follows back down to zero. And then put it back on. Most of the time, these things are kept at a full, just short of the red line, because you want to uh, have it available. That's your time of useful consciousness tool to get you from high altitude. Your uh, rotary test switch for all of your different components is in the off position and all of the electronic buttons above the standby instruments are uh, 
not powered, so there's no indication from them. These are your switches for arming and pressing the firewall cutoff valve and the fire retardant in the engine. And you can arm both bottles and send them to either side or both to one side. So that's a nice little fact. And let's see, I would like to see in this space over here between the uh, left hand fire bottles and the uh, master warning switch, I'd like to see an angle of attack meter and a G meter, which is what I always have installed in my airplanes. Above is the compass and the grab handle, and then above that is the lighting and the knobs that control those lightings and the movable glare shields that you can position so it uh, protects you from the sun. And that's basically your instrument panel rundown. Now, your trim wheel, your menu call-up button for all of the features that you would use in showing your revision and your change log and that your automatic uh, update feature is enabled. There's your parking brake. This is your emergency brake handle. And the way that works is it puts nitrogen in the brake lines because if you've lost, it throws a one-way valve that shuts off the hydraulics. And then you pull that out and it has about three or four good pulls, but you want to pull it out. When you release it, you release that amount of nitrogen which means you've reduced your stopping power. So when you pull it, you want to pull it gradually not to lock the brakes up because you will not have ABS. And as you release it, it lets that charge of, uh, of nitrogen out of the system. And of course, before you can use the normal brakes again, the system has to be bled. Okay, and these of course are your rudder pedals. Hinged for braking, articulating forward, gives you braking on either side, pushing at the bottom, gives you rudder capability. Now here's your FMS panel for you to manipulate the FMS, select and buttons to direct, clear, flight plan, program, menu, and also range. Then you have your aileron and rudder trim. And uh, I'm going to discuss it uh, in another video, but we, we have some uh, trim and uh, aileron misrig with the graphics that are uh, in the aircraft as it's displayed currently. Uh, I'm going to be sending some uh, some data to the designer so that he can uh, hopefully correct that. And you have your uh, switch over here for the uh, engine sync which is off or in normal and your flap handle. So there is your detents that you would have an actual detent but they're not uh, in most throttles. I use a, a HOTAS stick and throttle for uh, flying with the right hand and uh, throttle on the left hand. All right, uh, I have started to work on my views. This is my uh, basically my overall cabin view from eye level. Next to that I have a, a zoom in on the center three panels and the uh, control panel above. Next to that I have the co-pilots view. Number four on the keypad I have assigned to look to the left from the pilot's viewpoint. Then going back through the normal view to the right hand side which I moved over from the co-pilot side to give me a better downward view. Number seven on the pad is from one of the passengers views forward which is a nice touch. You can see out landing and what's going up in front of you. Number eight is again another this is good for starting because you can get to and use the starter buttons and to the what they call in the military the girly switch so you don't cut your throttles off in flight and then this lets you get down to the uh, FMS. I will probably lower that and so that it will include the trim uh, panels. And last but not least I have an outside view on number zero that gives me flap down indication, gear down indication, and nose wheel centering, which is, shall we say, quite important. Notice the great detail in the trailing link landing gear, 
the attention to detail on the braking lines, the electrical lines for the weights on weight on wheel switches, and um, it's uh, it's nicely done. It's very well modeled and uh, very accurate. You can see a little bit of uh, straight lining on the side of some of the things, but that's just the amount of pixels and the amount of time that you, uh, uh, to develop a, a model like this graphically, visually, it takes a lot of pixels and a lot of lines. And uh, this is a very, very nice and nicely done uh, aircraft from all the views, the panels. You know, one of my... Uh, observations was that the uh, the livery on this particular airplane if you zoom in now in this position you can see that the rudder appears to be visually lined up in center but that will not be the case when you go down the runway and you take off you'll notice you'll have a displaced um, rudder indication as would be the ball in the turning ball indicator and there's a slight mismatch in the uh, graphic display on the tail. And that's, you know, of course, a minor problem. The uh, screws that hold the nacelles on are greatly exaggerated in size and they're not flush. They would usually be flush and countersunk. But again, uh, there's a lot of work in this type of airplane and to get everything just as beautiful and smooth and round takes a lot of hours generally much more than you can return on a uh, $40, air, $40 aircraft. Anyway, uh, I'm very impressed with this airplane. I love the way it flies. There are a few little anomalies and I'm going to try and point those out in my videos uh, detailing the aircraft. But for today, I just wanted to uh, go over the cockpit and some of the uh, issues that I have already discovered and show you the KJGG Williamsburg Airport that is located in Williamsburg, Virginia. And it's a privately owned aircraft. All funding is done from the owner. There's no state or federal funding in this airport. So if you get a chance to come to the Virginia Peninsula or the eastern part traveling north and south on the east, it's a great place to stop and get fuel. They have a wonderful restaurant and uh, this scenery was designed and presented by a gentleman named Belga12345. He has a lot of scenery in the Virginia area, and they're all very detailed, hand-placed items like the flowers. And uh, the windsock and the flag reflect the actual wind direction in actual usage. So it's, a, it's quite a nice airport and uh, well-displayed and quite useful. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. And I'll be doing content on a lot of new aircraft as we move along. And I'm going to be doing a pilot series from a pilot to help beginners and to uh, let you see the value in different aircraft and whether they're right for you before you spend your hard-earned money. Thank you. This is Jagjet, and please remember, life goes on within you and without you.